Welcome to A Star Is Bored. I'm Keith Weiss. And I'm Mariah Cameron. So the reason we're having a little mess before this is we have a little announcement ahead of our interview with Blair Goldberg, who we'll talk mm-hmm. about in a moment. We are going to have our first public reading on the podcast this Wednesday at 8 o'clock. As I decide without consulting others. We... I'm like writing that down. Okay. <laughs> I, I feel like 8 o'clock is a reasonable time for that kind of stuff. It's uh, yeah. And our first public reading is going to be one of my favorite plays. This is Our Youth by Kenneth Lonergan. This is it. Our actors <laughs> are going to be Zachary Galt, uh, who's going to play Warren. I'm mm-hmm. going to be playing Dennis, and my beloved friend Haley Nemeth is going to be playing Jessica. And it's going to be directed by Katherine Ann Taylor, a very good friend of mine. A yes. very good friend of mine. Excuse me. <laughs> Damn straight. She's, oh, yes. Put her on. I love that. She's New York City's finest. Oh, Blair so Goldberg bad. is uh, a woman. This woman is an actress. This actress is a mother. And that's why we're having her on. Because guess what? Yesterday, it was Mother's Day. And this Woo-hoo! podcast comes out the day after Mother's Day. So sorry, I'm not going to work on Mother's Day to release a podcast early when I could be spending time with my mother. What are you doing for Mother's Day, Mariah? It's been familiar. So we are um, getting catering. Oh, wait, I can't be too loud. My mom's in the other room. Oh, my God. She might have heard that. Uh <laughs> which would be terrible because she um she was there when her present was delivered so she knows what her present is mm-hmm. she's already gotten it she might now know that we're getting catered dinner but she doesn't know we're making brownies no kidding so now yeah. i'm gonna whisper because okay i have a fucking mic so <laughs> and we're gonna hear me no matter what i do now mariah had yes. to miss the interview with blair because and that's okay. Look, her, it was about her family, and I figured that because Mariah is a, a troll's home slice. Period. Trolls the experience home slice, to clarify that. Now, Mariah I had to miss this because... The food we're getting for tomorrow, um, the, the deposit was getting uh, mishandled, and they were telling us that we never paid it, and we were like, yes, we did here's the receipts, here's the record. And then we were on hold for like a really long time. So it was was a bit of a nightmare and it got, honestly, time got away from me, but it's, uh, it's better now. They they even threw in some free alcohol. So yeah. What alcohol? Oh, we're going to have like a Moscato punch. (gasps) Because my mom's not much of a drinker. So we don't want to do anything too crazy. Blair's got two kids, you know, two kids, two kids. And she is a working actress on top of all that. And now, here is our interview with Blair Goldberg. Did you guys just move? Is that right that I saw that? Yes, we did. Oh my God. Moving during a time like this seems like insanity. It was kind of insane, but it was um, planned. It was just happened to be that the timing was bad. It was going to be, so we bought the house, we were going to buy the house in April and then not move until, um, uh, oh my God, it's snowing outside of my window. I saw. Insane. Um, we were going to not move until, uh, late June after the, um, year was over, uh, the school year was over, but then like, we'll just close and move. So actually it's crazy. Moving was the easiest part. I was like terrified, but the movers like did everything. I didn't, I was barely even there. They just packed everything up and we granted, we didn't take a lot of furniture. Like 90% of it was new. Um, but they were amazing. So talk about essential workers. Am I right? Seriously. (laughs) I know some friends who just moved out of Astoria and moved like 20 blocks down and like did it all themselves. And that's crazy to me at a time like this. Like, thank God, like, you're in your 20s and you could do that. But, like, still, that's insanity to me. Not with the kid. It's insane. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine. Uh, and everybody's okay. My, um, my favorite kids in the world. And uh, 
the best man ever. <laughs> He's great. Everyone's great. They're uh, downstairs. We're probably going to order a pizza tonight because we're not very inspired to cook. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, they're great. They're really happy and they're healthy. Knock wood. So uh, yeah. How about yes. you and your family? Everyone's good? Yeah. Um, you know, we, we had all sort of plans, but like my parents want to, you know, I was living in East Harlem and, uh, right now there's somebody who might take my apartment okay. and I'm inspired to give it to them, but they want to come with me and help me move. And I'm like, I don't think you understand this situation. You're not going anywhere. You got to stay where you are. Not mm -hmm. worry about that. Such a scary time. It is, but you know what? I, I think it's how we're adapting. And that's something like I've said on this a billion times. Like it's, it's how we choose to act now that is going to determine how, how we do things later. Yes, absolutely. You're a hundred percent right. It's kind of great to have somebody like you right now on this because it is Mother's Day weekend. And I just wanted somebody who understood what it's like to like balance the industry with like building a family which is not something that's like associated, like uh, having a career in theater. It's about you and, and how you work with others in the industry. It's yeah. not much about your family, you know? So I want to, yeah. to ask you about that. So many like um, younger people that I still meet nowadays are like, they, they tell us in college that you have to choose. You have to choose one or the other. It's such boring, outdated advice to be giving young aspiring performers so it it really um i think it's turning around though you know we have something called the broadway baby mamas um and it's a big group of moms who are um in the industry and we are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger because more and more women are talking about being moms and how we how we balance this um and we're trying to inspire you know the younger generation or and even this generation that it's it's perfectly okay to do both and it's great to do both and it actually makes you a better actor and a better performer absolutely my... it probably gives you the flexibility to not worry about yourself as much which is always good for an actor yes 100 percent. like i always say like i'll go and i'll have an audition now versus before i became a mom and i'll go into the audition room and i'm still a ball of nerves don't get me wrong but after it's over I can throw it away and go take care of my kids and focus on them. And also like if they didn't like me and I don't get a call back or I don't get the job, like, guess what? I have a family at home who needs me and loves me and thinks I'm great. So it's what a was new the last audition you went on before all this happened. Oh, that's a great question. I went like a week before this all happened for a jagged little pill they were doing. They needed a replacement. Um, I think it was a vacation swing. Mm. Uh, yeah it was right it was like march 1st or something and it was actually funny because it would have not funny very sad but it would have started in 10 days from then and so i was so bummed when i didn't get it but also like i would have been way more bummed had i got it it's and true it's so, true i mean everything yeah. happened for a weird reason but uh yeah that was the last one were you uh did you like alanis morissette like when you were growing up was that like a part of your culture as like a teenager I am um, not quite as a teenager, but when I was like nine or 10, she was really blowing up and I was like way too young to be listening to her music, but I was, were you? Uh, no, funny enough. Like now I hear she's the new, um, it's sort of like the green day wave of like the new rock musical into theater. So everybody's like, you gotta listen to Alanis Morissette, but only like a year ago, you know? Dang, I did not know that. See, I thought it was all the like 30 and 40 year old women that were uh, going to see her her show. But that's interesting that the younger generation is catching on. I mean, her music's great. I'm a big fan. Yeah, um, I think when what I was saying, it was more just like the millennials catching on to like the, the thing that Broadway's pushing at them. But she was yeah. undeniably a real thing. Like, I think I knew longer than that this was going to be a Broadway musical or anything about her album. I knew that Uncle Joey was the inspiration for You Ought to Know. Yeah, <laughs> like, that never, I knew to be true. She never yeah. been denied. But I mean, I think if, an, if when there's smoke, there's fire, right? If enough people have said it, it's there's probably some truth to it. But I, I, I'd like to believe that that's true. Now we've got like Uncle Joey, Aunt Becky, like they're <laughs> all, what's going to be next? What's Bob Saget going to do next? I feel like Bob Saget already took care of that part of his life. <laughs> you know what I mean? I get okay, that. John Stamos, good. No, I'm just, 
I love uh, it. John Stamos is seems to be like the most level headed out of out of the whole gang. Yeah, I feel like because those sisters really went crazy, they, didn't they? They, I mean, Candace Cameron Burr. She's sort of like she's taken the like evangelist kind of route now, right? Yeah, and then, yeah, as far as I know, and then the middle one, Jody Sweeten, was like a, a coke addict at some point, right? Is that something wrong? Like that. Allegedly, yeah. I don't know. And then, uh, you know, the Olsen twins. Wow. Yeah, they just they made New York Minute and launched themselves into that part of the entertainment industry. Most of the people who are listening right now don't even know that you've known me for ten years and yeah. that we grew up in the same place like i literally had caitlin on earlier this week caitlin herman yes and, love her. oh god she was the best i was so surprised that like she was my favorite guest just because i've been interviewing a lot of actors and oh, a cool. lot of people in our industry have their own way of wanting to conduct these things but she was so open and she knew to ask questions and okay. like it she it was one of my favorite conversations i've had so far that's yeah. awesome. She's a cool girl. Yeah. Shout out to Caitlin. Shout out to Caitlin Herman. And Tommy Brocco was with her. I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we've ever met, but we have a lot of mutual friends. Oh, yeah. He's he's such a sweetheart. He, he's just one of those people who has those, like, that New York accent that makes me feel, like, good about mine. So. I know, right? First thing you did, I guess, was, like, Annie, get your gun, right? Yeah, I was a child actor. Yeah, I was super, uh, super young. I was, like, 10 years old when I made my Broadway debut. Um, and Annie, get your gun, the revival uh, with Bernadette Peters. And, yeah, it was one of those things. I have, like, very vivid memories from it. And I, I knew what a big deal it was at the time, but I guess I didn't fully grasp at that age and how could you that um, like this was such a rarity and such an honor and a privilege. And I was just like, I, yeah, well, I like to sing and I like to dance and I like to act and I'm good at it. So obviously I'm on Broadway. Yes. You know? And I don't think that that <laughs> makes really sense when you're nine. <laughs> right, you know? right, right, right. I don't think the reality set it until I had gotten to college or actually no, earlier than that. Definitely in high school when I, you know, I wasn't working. Um, I wish I had been, but the fact that it actually took some uh, real determination and uh, a lot of luck, you know, at a certain point um, didn't really dawn on me until later on. Um, but uh, certainly made it all the more sweet when I did return to Broadway as an adult. Um, and I, I, I cherished it a lot more. I cherished it then, but I cherished it with a lot more adult um, savviness at that age but yeah bro it is a 10 is wild super wild do you think like being a child actor at that age sort of evolved you as a person and made you like a little more mature than you would expect it to be yeah for sure i mean i would that was in 99 and i mean i was 10 and i was watching you know um men kiss men and women, women, and everyone get un unchanged in front of themselves. Yeah, and that was like a big deal at the time, right? To so I think it made me just more open and accepting of all different kinds of walks of life and um, just the culture of it all. Um, and certainly, like you know, etiquette and backstage etiquette and and working in a theater. I think I learned a lot really young that I carried into adulthood. And then, of course, you know, the craziness of having a full time job that pays a real salary at that age, yeah. you know, there was some, um, you know, cockiness on my part of like, of you know, feeling like an adult when I was 10 <laughs> um, and thinking I knew everything about how the world worked at 10, which I think hindered, you know, me into, into adulthood. And, and, you know, I think I grew up very fast and I, th I thought I knew everything very young, um, but, right. you know, it has its pros and cons, but for sure that it influenced my development. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I want to like kind of ask you about growing up in Plainview and throughout like high school, getting to that point where like you were around, you were already kind of a professional. Right. And, uh, you know, you were, uh, you saying you were auditioning and all that, but yeah. how did you give yourself the freedom to just be a teenager? Yeah, I think that I made that shift a little earlier, um, more like middle school when I was super, um, like I was going through puberty very early. I was becoming a woman, but I was still a little girl. And I was, it was very obvious to me that I was not going to get the child actor jobs that 
um, my friends were getting that I had worked on Broadway before who still looked like little kids. And so I think just physically, um, I was kind of snapped back into reality of like, oh, I look like a woman now, but I'm not a woman yet. But I think I'm a child actor, but I want to do adult roles. And so I think it was made clear to me that that was not going to happen for me at that moment. Um, and so I just kind of tried to embrace the social aspects of, you know, again, being a young teenager and then being a full teenager. Um, and I, I got to do, a lot of people ask me, they're like, well, you joined Equity when you were so young, so you couldn't do any shows. But I did get to do my school shows. I got to do my college shows. Yeah. You can, Equity is very, at least they were when I was growing up, they're very flexible about giving allowances for that. Yeah, I'd like to see that equity spokesperson come to Plainview and like stop the production. <laughs> right, exactly. It's, it's just, just not wild. what they're. It's just not what they're after. I mean, um, we did kind of have an issue when I remember we did how to succeed the same year they did it on Broadway, so oh. we couldn't advertise it on the, our posters. We had to be okay. like, "Coming to Plainview is a musical that you're gonna see on the program that when you come see the show." <laughs> Really? I did. I don't recall that. That's very yeah. funny. It was, but, yeah. it was a bit ridiculous, but yeah, the rights to all that are, are so bonkers, but yeah, no, they never gave me an issue. And so I, I, um, you know, I auditioned when things came up and things started coming up more as I was getting closer to high school graduation. That was when like spring awakening was coming and mm. I could start like, you know, there's really very, very little for the 11 to 15 range on Broadway in general. If you look How at old were you when Spring Awakening came out? I'm just like curious. 16, 17. Wow. Yeah, I literally saw that when I was far too young. I was like 12 years old when I saw it. And I was like, this has, this is the coolest thing. This is what I should be doing. And my parents were it like, was. God, no. Please. I know, but it was. I remember. I mean, like that, yeah. that was kind of revolutionary for us. Um, Felt yeah. like it that was like when it started when it started to be like okay back in the game back in the game and i was doing well and things were coming close and and i all not to say that i didn't think i was always going to work eventually but i was uh, then it started becoming more clear to me that like all right it's going to something something will happen if i keep at it and go to yeah. school are you a believer in like putting in those hours of like just auditioning and eventually it'll come that sort of like manifestation i i i am I think that I kind of go back to like the Seinfeld quote about like, if you, if you're standing in the line and like you get off before your number comes up, like you got to go back to the end of the line. Like you have to stay on the line, in the line, whatever the Long Island version of that is, you oh. have to stay put. Yes. And, um, you know, I've just seen it too many times, like with friends who are in their thirties, sometimes forties, haven't made their Broadway debut and they're still pounding that pavement. And it, it happens. It really does. Yeah. And um, look, talent is 90% of it, but I think the work ethic and the determination, uh, maybe, maybe like 80, 20, but I think you yeah. have to, be, I, I mean, I think for the most, you know, but like, I really do think it's, and I also think about that when like, uh, when we have agents, like, you know, you pay your agent 5%, 10%, because you're supposed to be doing most of the work, not them. Yeah. So I do believe in putting in those hours and putting in, in the work and just showing up and not necessarily that things are going to stick eventually, but eventually if you're willing to take the feedback, not necessarily the verbal feedback, but the callback or the not callback feedback, if you're able to take that feedback and see, I'm getting called back for this stuff, I'm not getting called back for this stuff, you'll start to see a pattern and you'll start to e either self-realize like, oh, maybe I'm not the type I thought I was. Maybe I should be singing this material rather than this part or wearing this kind of dress or not. Like there's things that you can just start to realize this works for me, this works for me. And the only way you start to know that is just repetition and doing it and going to those auditions and doing it over and over again. There are What did people like, say your type was for a while? I'm just curious. Because with women, it's just much more different than men. With men, it's like, oh, you're a leading man or you're a character. But with yeah. like women who could dance and and sing and act there's all sorts of uh boxes they could put you in you know yeah i mean i think like in my heart i always want to be the leading lady so i'm always like putting myself forward as the leading lady the serious yes. dramatic lead um but i'm constantly getting called back and constantly being put in the funny quirky girl next door pile mm. um, 
and that's fine. Like it's all, and cause you know, I, I, I appreciate that people find me humorous sometimes, maybe not on this podcast yet, but I swear I'm <laughs> sometimes, but having yeah. said that, I'm always, I always pictured myself as the dot in Sunday in the park with George, the mother in ragtime. And then I would yeah. you know, just notice like the role I didn't carry was the funny friend, this, the friend of Hi. even with like kinky boots when I was in callbacks and auditioning all those years, they never quite knew what to do with me. Like I was either like, I, maybe I was a Lauren, maybe I was a Nicola. It was always kind of in between. So my feedback is always kind of that I'm in between. Yeah. And, and I see that like you have played a lot of like understudy roles and like ensemble roles. And I feel like that, that like fortifies your career in a way because it makes you more reliable. So <laughs> even if you're not, even if, and maybe they don't see you as a dot yet, but they right. have to earn, you have to earn your trust first, you know? Okay, totally. And I think yeah. age has a lot to do with it. And I think I look a lot younger sometimes on stage than I actually am. I'm short ish, but I, you know, but I look womanly. It's like a weird in between. Yeah. So I think, I think age is on my side in this career. Um, I'm oh, hoping yeah. at least. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see like what I can grow into. What are you uh, doing to stay sane for yourself during this? I mean, someone asked me that the other day and I don't really have, much time to think about that. I'm raising right. kids, you know, you, like you got your family. There's so yeah. much to do. It's just, I'm not, it's funny. Cause I'm like a sucker for sitting on the couch and doing nothing and having free mm -hmm. time. And I, that's like, that is my jam. Like give me Netflix and my DVR, like, and I'm good to go. And I will use my baby's nap time for that. I will use yes. like my daughter's school day for that. Like, I don't care. But I just can't do that now because I'm schooling her when he's napping, you know, I, you know, and running around this new house. And that's okay. Like, super grateful and things are good. But I have not had any real self-care time. So mm. I'm looking forward to tomorrow for Mother's Day, maybe having a few hours to myself. Yeah. Maybe but, somebody will do something for you. Me. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, exactly. But I will say that um, it's been as horrible as everything is and as uncertain as these times are, I, I'm so very grateful for the family time. And, you know, my baby is almost 10 months and like my husband and I are getting to see like every milestone together, you know, like, it's not like I have to text him a picture from work, you know, to be like, Oh my God, he crawled or he did it. We're all yes. home. Together. And, um, you know, as much as I'm not a fan of, of, being a teacher and homeschooling my daughter um it is very 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 inspiring and cool to to watch progress um like really head on and like she's learning to read and like to feel like oh wow i'm yeah. i'm helping her i'm actually helping her it's not her i mean her teacher's doing amazing don't get me wrong but like i'm there motivating her when the teacher's not on the screen so i you know there's a lot of cool stuff so that yeah you get to you get to see things that you wouldn't see. I saw like a graduation speech at this time of year. I just go into all the commencement speeches to make me feel good, even though like I've already graduated. But um, Shonda yeah. Rhimes was saying like when I am succeeding at one thing in my job, I am failing as a parent, or vice versa. You know, mm -hmm. when I get to be there for Sandra O's last day of shooting, I'm missing my daughter's ballet recital, totally. and like. I, I want to ask you about like, how, how do you feel about being kind to yourself when, you know, you have to work and, you know, you, you and your husband sort of have a, I guess you guys have like the jobs that sort of make work really well with each other in a way, right? Yeah. Yeah. We tag team a lot when I am working and it's funny you said that about the dance recital. Um, literally when this was all going down, I was set, I was starting a new show um, supposed to be starting a new show on March 17th. Uh, that's been postponed indefinitely. It's fine. On Broadway? No, um, something that was going to be regional and then hopefully coming to Broadway. Nice. Um, and I was going to, my, my closing date was going to be, it was going to be March 17th to May 24th. And um, May 17th was a Sunday or a Saturday. I don't know. I, and I was set to have a show or two shows and I was going to miss my daughter's dance recital. And that has not happened yet. Um, you know, she's just getting old enough to have like recitals and real things, you know, cause she's Oh, so this is one of the first you haven't. Yeah. Oh, I see. So I've been working pretty much her whole childhood, but 
she's, she was so little. It wasn't like I was ever missing a, a pro, like a teacher, parent teacher conference, like nothing like that had come up yet. It was just starting now. So, um, I was feeling really guilty about it. And I actually had asked her teacher, I was like, can she, can, I, can maybe they move her up earlier in the set? So maybe I could get, and they were going to do it. But I felt wow. like, like it was, so that was starting to feel really hard. Um, and, and my daughter's very, at least for now, she's very flexible in her expectations. Like she's not a kid that really like will, take that to heart and be sensitive about that. Like she could, she's pretty logical. And if I told her like, I have to go to work and I will make it up to you in X, Y, Z way. She's the type of kid that like will thrive on the X, Y, Z way and get more excited by the like, Oh, what do I get instead? Like at least at this age. Yeah. So I it, it's scary because she is just looking more and more like you every day. And it is just so, it must be nice, especially when you're the mother who yeah. like, you know, you, okay. you made her you yeah. know you, you you do like I would I would say it's like what what would you say the percent rate of like mother to father is obviously it's like it should always be 50 50 but like what on a statistical point do you think it, it with might my be? kids what do I think yeah. they are yeah. oh I see 80 20 with Lila 80 percent me 20 percent Adam and my baby, I see a split of 50-50. When he was born, I was like, that's my husband's carbon copy. Uh, oh. And I was like, I'm not even sure that was my egg. Like, I was, I did not see me at all. And now I'm like, oh, yeah, he's my kid. He looks like me, too. So 50-50. But, nice. yeah, she is, she is my little clone, and I love it. It must be nice. It must it be will nice. Bite me. I will, it will bite me in the butt in, like, 10 years. Do you have brothers and sisters? I have a sister. Uh, Stacy is... We are each like one of our parents, but there's when we when we're together, we sort of do like the things together, like we're we're twins almost. Yep. She was supposed to go to um, Cambridge, the University of Cambridge, this summer to do oh, her postdoctorate. She just graduated yesterday. Oh she my got god! Got a PhD yes. in uh, neuroscience and child development from Temple. She's a beast. She's a genius. That's fantastic! Congratulations. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so now she's like adapting to like working and collaborating remotely okay. and you know we, we all are too a little bit but she is literally on the other side of this wall <laughs> we're like I now that it. we're back in our childhood home we're sort of like reverting to like i was gonna say do you revert i totally revert whenever yeah, I'm it's in happening it's it's happening. happening and i'm trying to be like no i'm an adult i've made i've made so much i've evolved <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's it's hard, but there's you can't stop it. As I mean, you can make you can make little tweaks, but you can't stop the like, what are you making me for dinner? Or like, your old sheets. It's so weird. It's also weird. Get it. It's, it's it's nasty. You know what I did want to talk to you about, and yeah. like, I'll, I'll I'll be honest about it. Like, your your husband had a huge impact on my life, and I would be remiss not to like give you the opportunity to like talk about how y'all met because he really like. Yeah, at the time I was in high school and I had no idea that all the structure and rigid, for me it was like, oh, this is, this must be it. This is everything. And then I didn't realize what it would do for me, um, what choir does for me, uh, you know, oh, now. And dude, you would know, love to hear that. I'll have to tell, I'll have to pass on the. Oh yeah. Yeah. The but what to give you that chance to, to talk about it, if you're cool with it. Of course. Yeah. Nice. So um, Adam and I uh, met in high school. He was my teacher my music teacher and also yours too yeah how, how many years different are we four five uh how many years apart are oh, we me and you me and you i think like five something like that so we yeah. didn't go to school together but no 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 graduated. yeah and um we always love making music together um it's funny because we really don't anymore we never really have time but we do for our kids uh we try and and like come together for our kids and do that and when we do that it reminds us of like what brought us together and um oh. yeah it's it's really cool we've uh we've been through everything together at this point he saw me through my college years and um you know we he always really believed in me and what um what i could do and especially like that we I loved the fact that he wanted to have a family with me and, and help me pursue my career at the same time by being a present father. You know, I couldn't do it without yeah. him. You know, we, again, like I was saying, we tag team so much. He'll come home from work. 
um, he's still a teacher at that same very school. And it's he's crazy that he's still there because he always looked like, he, he always looked as young as, as, as you. So like, I totally yeah, he get, looks like a baby. yeah, he looks like a baby and I'm sure he still does, but it, it astounds me like the structure that he's created for that school with the acapella pro program. There's like eight acapella groups there now that are run by like little students. And yeah, he's like, so he good at his job. And, you know, people just love him. And he writes an awesome blog, Coral Clarity. Mm. Um, and he's really smart and he's really, really good at what he does. He, don't tell him I said any of this. Because I won't. He'll think I... Yeah. you know, think these nice things about him. But um, yeah, I'm starting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> He's so good at what he does. And a lot of people in the field, um, you know, look to him and um, yeah, it's awesome. It's great. But like I was saying, he's super like, you know, he's a very involved parent in that, you know, when I am working and when I am doing um, a show, he's, I never have to, you know, he's, he's like one of those dads that can like, my friends would be like, oh, I'm tech. I have to text my husband 700 directions where to find the cheese, blah, blah, blah. And like Adam mm. just does it. He's just great with the kids. And so, um, and he's, it's awesome that he's a teacher and I really can see him like teaching our kids. It's really cool. Um, oh, wow. And yeah, it's super yeah. special. So yeah, we love Adam. He's great. Oh, uh, he's, uh, this is the Adam fan club for sure. It's, oh, good. It's there just, go. um, yeah, you were saying he was there for you while you were trying to like make, continue that career for yourself and yeah. like also sort of start a family and like I want to talk about your journey from like kinky boots and I if I remember right you were you were pregnant when you were on tour with Lila right yeah that's right so I um I was on tour and um I always knew we always knew we wanted to have kids it was not a debate and people were like you can't you can't tour and and be on Broadway and have kids and I was like watch me watch me no one yes. specifically again I don't want to like paint everyone out to be negative but that is a general like oh how are you going to do that well I'm going to go to work I'm either a babysitter or my husband is going to watch my child and then I will when I'm done with work I'll come home and be a mom lots of women do it every day yeah how are you going to audition you know how I'm going to either have my husband or hire a babysitter like, babysitter you know, it's it's common it's sense it's and... just not that complicated and I feel like people are like how do you make it work? There's nothing yeah. to make it work. Like, how do you make any job work? My job is no more important or crazy and out there to do as a working parent than anybody else's. So anyway, to make a long story short, um, I we, we decided we were like, hey, we've, we're on tour. I don't know how much longer I'm going to be on tour. I don't know what's going on. I had thought initially that I was going to have problems getting pregnant because I knew I had some issues with my ovaries. And I mm -hmm. thought this might take a really long time. I don't know what's going to happen. And so, uh, boom, we got pregnant with Lila right away. And I was on tour with knee boots and I was freaked out and terrified and excited. Um, and I ended up staying on that tour till I was about five months pregnant with her. Um, I would have stayed longer. Yeah. I would have stayed longer, but just aesthetically, that was about the time when I was just starting to really show and I couldn't understudy Nicola, which was my understudy track who wears just she's getting married in the show and she's just clearly not pregnant whereas my ensemble track that i was doing every night could be pregnant because she was just yeah. working in the shoe factory funny so, enough i got to see you pregnant doing that track on broadway oh was i pregnant with nolan when you i believe so yeah okay wow okay yeah, so yeah. um i had her and i thought one we both agreed one child and done um and i came home back um pregnant with her back to the city and I was on maternity leave. Um, when you're on a production contract, they hold your spot for a year. Um, and when that year is up, you can go back on tour, go back to your Broadway job, whatever. So I kept that door open. I went home, I had the baby. Um, and I was kind of postpartum getting my life together, figuring out how to be a mom. And, uh, about six weeks after she was born, I got a call that they um that the same exact role that i had played on the tour was opening up on broadway which is what are the odds just like one in a million and would i like to join the broadway company but here's the catch you start in like three weeks are you ready do you have like are you good wow. were you ready did you were you good 
Yeah, I was. I was like, hell yeah. I was so excited. I was like beyond. And it was crazy because if I had still been out on that tour and all things being equal, the same exact role had opened up on Broadway, there was no chance in hell they were going to take me from that tour and put me on Broadway. They would have just hired a girl in New York and kept me on the tour. And, you know, why right. would they change around things like that? So exactly. had I not had my daughter, um, I, I feel like she was my ticket, you know, back to Broadway. Oh. So yeah, um, that I, I was stayed on Broadway all th- um, until we closed. So that was like another three years and sh- three years and a half. I don't even remember the exact numbers, but yeah. I was there. For a and um, towards the end of that run, before we knew we were closing, um, just about a year before, yeah, I was like, you know what? I, I really want to have another kid. We I, we really wanted another baby. Um, and I was like, but I don't know when to do it because I got pregnant so quickly. And if I get pregnant right now, I don't know when the show is closing. I mean, I had my feelings about when it might be closing, but I really didn't know. Um, yeah, I, I got to say for a second, like that Kinky Boots was one of those shows that skyrocketed yeah. from like the structure that Chicago and like other shows made where it's like, yeah, let's like throw somebody in there and see how long it lasts. And they went crazy with it. Like the pop culture corners that they went to to keep that show alive were so satisfying it was insane it was great and it was i mean it was going to close i believe before brendan yuri came into it from panic at the disco and that just when they saw that they could start making you know 1.2 million a week with a celebrity like that again they were like we can keep this show open if we keep rotating celebrities and it was amazing we were thrilled and we got to work with so many cool different people the cast was constantly changing which kept the show fresh and exciting yes. and the fans loved it the fans kept coming back to see the new charlie to see the new lola so yeah I was cool. what um were you there when wayne brady was lola i came in oh, when wayne brady was lola yep he was my, yeah and he was awesome and so sweet and so kind um he is such an inspiration to me you love him? because he really is because he, it seems like he can do it all yeah. and he's an improviser and he's an actor and he's a, he's a singer, but he also like is like a real raw person on top of all of that. And I can't think of a better actor who has the instruments and the sensitivity to play Lola. Yeah. And even see- like as a straight person, because there's arguments to be made that like, yes, queer people should be played by, by queer people. But like, yeah, but there's nowhere in the script, according to Harvey Firestein, there's nowhere in the scripts that states that Lola is queer. Get out of here. Oh, man. Trust me. I, mean, I have my own feelings. But like <laughs> they, they've made it they, like Harvey Firestein always said, never says he's gay. Wow. That's but- another man that like made me empowered as like a little chubby jewish kid yeah. like i gotta say he he uh we studied torch song trilogy in college and like reading through all of that was just so mesmerizing and so upsetting and he's one of those people who's had to like redefine his career through the aids pandemic as a gay man and like yeah. that's just it's very empowering to me did you see um wayne brady on the mask singer <sighs> I didn't, didn't, I didn't die. Oh, you didn't. oh man, he was. I I knew it was him. Uh, like a couple of weeks in, because uh, there was uh, a clue that he. Um, everybody say yeah. That was it. Oh, no. Um, and I was sure, just like, <laughs> oh, duh. Obviously, that's like. How, do you watch the messenger? No, but I like kind of YouTubed a little bit of it when I heard that he oh, had yeah. one. I was like, now I got to kind of watch. But m- should I watch? Is it legit? I, I'm i not the biggest fan of this season. There's all sorts. They're getting like Instagram influencers this oh, season. My. And I'm like, damn. Mm-hmm. But when Chris Daughtry was on, I was I was bucking out. It really? Okay. Yeah, he was incredible. All right. uh, and then Seal was on That's at one cool. point. It's... It's it's all incredible. We gotta we gotta get you on there. We gotta start that petition for all people. All right, let's start. I'm gonna call my agent tomorrow morning and get me on the mass singer. God, have you been um, adapting with like your representation about auditions? Like, do you have like a, a mic or do voiceover auditions at times? You or? know, I don't have a mic. I suppose I could invest in one, but um, <laughs> I'm I'm really just enjoying this time with my family now. And when yes. theater does come back. And it will. I will be there 
with open arms yeah. and I will pound the pavement. But I, you know, I, the reality is there's nothing going on. It's and, true. Uh, you know, I'm, it's I, true. I, I, it's, it's trying to embrace the quiet and the non pressure yeah. to succeed. Yeah, um, there's like a piece uh, to like being, especially like when you've solidified yourself and you've put in the work to start a family, like you could just sit back and enjoy it and that's okay, you know? Yeah, yeah. it's oddly, that aspect of it is oddly comforting to me because I, I do spend a lot of time just, you know, comparing to others and where others are in their career and oh my gosh, am I, where am I gonna be in X amount of years? And, and this kind of just is a moment of just pressure is off. There's, everyone is in the same boat. None of us are working, none of us, I mean, look, I know people are posting about their self, all their self tapes they're doing, but the reality is there's, there's absolutely nothing no. going on and no, no, no. nothing's going to be going on yeah. for some time. And um, I, I will say this, there's like, there's a musical theater community and I'm, I was born part of, of, of that. And then yeah. there's also like, like this off, off Broadway community that is like really going to have to financially like figure out what's going to happen next year for themselves. And sure. there's sort of the root of theater goers and making new art. That's like what musicals, like a strange loop and, yeah. and Cambodian rock bands there there's, and like my theater company, the fleet, like we all have to sort of figure out how we're going to rebuild. And there's things that actors can do right now to like, just, to meet people and to learn new to learn new skills i'm learning yeah. how to video edit because of this yes. and like you are you I, are completely right yeah. there's a lot to be learned during this time for sure and i could i could be for sure more motivated to oh. better myself in the way. and no i know yeah. i'm not saying <laughs> at all that you're saying that i'm just yeah, I, yeah. I get it and um yeah. I wish I, I, for that, I wish I had more time and um, it sure would be nice to, to not be a parent in that way at this time. Um, and it, it's going to be cool to see how things change. I think there's a lot of good that can come out of it. Um, a, lo a lot of scary stuff that you're talking about, but I think also a lot of good. I mean, like, think about, think about the ease of auditioning that we, we might not have, we might be doing self tapes in for, you know, preliminary rounds now for good. You know, right. like, no, I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Not that that's yeah. good or bad, but, you know, if you get really good at making a setup, I mean, even Adam was talking about like teaching, like think about all the, like the ways that like the class, I mean, <sighs> in a bad way, the way the classroom's not going to be as relevant anymore. It's very scary. It's all. Yeah. Very, yeah. Especially for arts people. Cause like I, we were talking the other day with some friends and they were, and my friend was like, should I go to grad school? And my, I mean, my only thought is like, there's one, you could be the guinea pig during this. You know what I mean? Like you could be the one who, you know, let's see what this can bring and what new, new skills I can learn. And like, we'll accept where we are and I'll get street cred later for, you know, adapting. And then there's also like, if you wait it out and you, if you've already gone to school and you want to go to grad school, it means you know a lot about the work that you want to be doing. Sure. So you can just do that work yourself and, right. and wait it out until we have this vaccine and all that. Fingers crossed. Like, yeah, I agree. I, I, I think you're dead on there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful in a year. I, I mean, how much longer can this, can people live this way? It's very, I mean, for, yeah. you know, physical health, yes, but mental health. I mean, no, there's I really vulnerable. You, I think we all, we all crack a little bit, like at least once a month, like you have to, it's human too. I um, love to drink wine. I'm just concerned at this point that when I come out of this thing, I'm going to rely on wine every night with dinner. Oh. This is like not me. And now it's like, I'm looking at the clock. I guess it's six o'clock. Yeah, can I have a drink yet? Oh my God, is it okay to have a drink yet? There's the wino. I'm here for it though. But you know, like I can self-regulate or at least I think I can, but I'm scared for, for a little more vulnerable people and what this yes. is going to do to their mental just 
state and new moms. I mean, my friend just had a baby like three weeks ago and she's doing great, but like, my God, I could not imagine having a baby right now and being isolated. It's just like the, it's just a bad combination. Yeah. That's like Rachel Bloom right now. She just had her baby like three weeks ago. Yeah, I can't even, I can't even imagine, especially with like everything going on with like her creative team from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. We just had Gabrielle. Louise okay, on a couple weeks That's ago. So cool. I can't wait to hear it. Did it, it came out already? or? You oh, yeah. It? She was wonderful. She had a mic. She had like a, this huge, tall thing. I was like, man, you were you were ready for this. <laughs> or, I, did, I did not come with a mic. I apologize. Oh, I hear you loud and clear. I, got, I only got this because I was like sort of going on Amazon and I was like, what can I buy that I can't? And I saw that this was only $30. So I was like, hey. this seems like something I should invest in. It took a month to come though. It was ridiculous. And that was before COVID obviously, right? Oh no, that was, they basically, I ordered it in like March 31st and they were like, the earliest we could get it to you is like April 30th. Although Amazon's been a little weird. They're saying that um, it's uh, like going to be longer than uh, it will be the the shipping date. And then it shows up like a day before or or like the next day. I have one Final question. I Please. and just for for Mother's Day purposes, yes. how has motherhood impacted your uh, your mind as an artist? Oh gosh, um, you know, I think it boils down to like that that thing of when you give birth and you have that baby and you're holding it in your arms, your heart just expands in a way that you never ever knew was possible. I mean, you could look at your husband, you could look at your family members and nothing can replace that feeling of this baby needs me. And this baby is relying on everything for me. And uh, it is my job to keep this person alive and the love that you have for that child. And especially then as they start to look like you and talk like you, it's just this weird, weird layer of love. And I think that that open heart that that way that that love just cracks your heart open just has made me i hope i feel just more vulnerable as an actor and more open and receptive to whoever i'm acting with um you know it's it's this multi-layered love that like you can you can't study in drama school i don't know i just yeah. you know i think i think it's just this life experience that um shapes you and just like it has just made me grow up or you know given me the privilege to grow up even more um and so I try and you know I try and use that and certainly oh my gosh when I'm doing something dramatic now like really intense dramatic in an audition and like you have to just go on and like you just jump right into it I'm like okay just picture the worst thing that could ever happen to my children okay I'm there let's go like and I never I could never I could never do that before not you know not that I Man. think I'm at it now but like it really has has just I, I think really made me a better actor and I'm, I'm so grateful and also just like I love that they've been part of my journey in um on Broadway and that like Lila grew up in Kinky Boots like at the Al Hirschfeld oh, that's crazy. Like, some of her first steps in that theater like it's really incredible and I'll oh, always man. have those memories and I just I really cherish them and yeah. also the uh, final thing I'll say about like yes. being mom and, and both of my babies I was pregnant with both of them in Kinky Boots and I I think about how cool it is that some of their first sounds in the womb must have been like that soundtrack and those songs and like that message and like how cool that like a message about being who you want to be and like accepting yourself and loving others you know not that they could understand anything but just that that message was was embedded in that That was the music they were hearing as they were like growing from like a little cell i I love that yeah I, I, i think it's really cool yeah the idea that like letting an actor finally because I feel like a lot of actors try to give themselves the love they deserve in those auditions and the only way that they know how is to like picture something bad happening to them or or, or someone who they you know love deeply or care about but when you become a parent that love just sort of becomes a lot more intense in a way that that is yeah. it's unprecedented yeah it's a really really special feeling and i'm just so glad i did it i'm so glad i trusted my gut and and knew that 
I could figure it out, you know? And I think, I think too many people don't think that they can figure this out and you really can, you really can do both. Um, when all this ends and all this crazy stuff ends. I hope so. Blair, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. This was really fun. I can't wait to listen to other episodes. Yes. Take care.